God is definitely the biggest court that a man can go to. But in the human level, there is a bigger court on this earth and that is your conscience and my conscience and Paul is telling, I will not go anywhere. I will look at my conscience and my conscience is telling me that I am pure and holy and a man of integrity. We live in a world with people with different beliefs and value systems. What is wrong according to me may be right according to someone else's values and beliefs. The key of knowing what is right and wrong according to our value is our conscience. What we feed into our conscience whether it is right or wrong. You see our conscience acts like a grid system. It is like that MCB switch in our home. When there is some short or something wrong, it sends a signal into our system and tells there is something wrong with us. Let me ask you this morning. Can you trust your conscience to give you the correct warning regarding the right and wrong in your day-to-day -day life? When you face a situation, can you trust your conscience whether it will hurt you for the right things or the wrong things in your life. Well, I want to speak this morning a message entitled Having a Clear Conscience. Having a Clear Conscience. In 1984, Avanca Airlines, the Spanish Airlines Boeing 707, had a fatal crash. It was zooming in high speed, going to the destination, but hit her mountain and the entire aeroplane went into a rubble. Not even a single person survived. As the researchers were searching for survivors and uh, the parts of the wreckage, they were hunting very much to find the black box to somehow decode what was happening inside this aircraft, in the cockpit especially, during the final hours before the final minutes before the crash. With a great difficulty, they got the black box and uh, they decoded it. And as they were decoding it, they came across a startling discovery. Just minute before the flight could crash on the mountain, the plane's warning system had given a computerized message to the pilots. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. The pilot was a Spanish man. He got very angry with this English and he said shut up foreigner and he stopped the signal that was telling them that sign pull up pull up and within minutes the flight hit the mountains and everybody died including the pilots. What a parable to show how conscience is intended to work and how dangerous it is to not to listen to us. Many of us are on life's pathway, life's flight. And many times when our conscience is pricking us, we are telling, shut up, you foreigner, shut up. And we do things that we don't want to do, hardening our conscience. And the disaster, we do not know which, when it is coming and striking against us. You see, conscience is a human faculty, like smell, touch, feelings, or taste, it is a human faculty. It's not divine. It is a faculty like pain. Is pain good? Pain is good. Because if we don't have pain, we will never realize that we have a sickness. Because we have pain, we go to the doctor, we get the test done, and we treat our sickness. Otherwise, we will all die without if there was no pain in our lives. Pain is a good faculty. Likewise, our conscience given by God is a good faculty for us. And it is not divine. It is on how we feed our conscience, the morality that we feed, the values that we feed our conscience, it will act according to what you feed into our conscience. So now the Bible speaks about four different kinds of consciences. Number one is a seared conscience, a conscience that is burnt. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 2, talking about false prophets, 
such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron this is giving the illustration of a cattle owner he has got a lot of cattle and he wants to brand his cattle maybe the cow or buffalo what he does is he takes the cattle to a place where there are there are uh, iron smith hot iron rods are made in the mold that he would like to brand his cattle the iron is made hot red hot in the furnace and placed on the cattle for a branding of the cattle so what happened the cattle skin and the tissues and the nerves and everything nearby is burned it's it's seared after the wounds are healed the brand will remain on the cattle but that place is insensitive to pain even a touch or a fall in that area or a pin prick will not affect the cattle because that sense of that place has been seared by fire bible says that there are many even believers who have seared burned their conscience and they continue about to do whatever they want to do without even pain or a remorse of feeling that they have done a sin against god moving on the bible talks about a weak conscience first corinthians chapter 8 and it's verse 12 when you sin against them this way talking about the strong christians and the weaker christians and wound their weak conscience you sin against christ now what is a what is a weak conscience a weak conscience is a conscience that has very less of god's word you are a believer but no word don't read the bible you don't going to church is not a priority for you your conscience has already seared one sunday you go don't go to church sometimes you said pricks but two or three sundays then it becomes okay whatever happens if i don't go to church on a sunday morning nothing matters it's a seared conscience then is a weak conscience what is a weak conscience a weak conscience is a conscience that is very little fed on god's word hardly any god's word you don't read the bible don't meditate on it don't attend bible studies no personal devotion so what happens so you do not know which is right which is wrong anytime you are you you can either fall for something good or fall for something bad because your system is very weak you have not fed yourself sufficiently with god's word and the bible calls such people that you are bound to fall you're bound to go against god because your conscience your level of understanding on right and wrong is very very weak and shallow then he talks about a corrupted conscience corrupted we're thinking and thinking and you corrupt yourself in evil and the lust of the world titus chapter 1 verse 15 to the pure all things are pure but those who are corrupted and do not believe nothing is pure in fact both their minds and consciences are corrupted moving on now the bible talks about the good conscience that's what my prayer for all of us to reach there to have a very clear and a good conscience come into first timothy chapter 1 and this verse 18 to 20 talks about the good conscience paul is talking to timothy my son i'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them you may fight the battle well holding on to faith and a good conscience which some have rejected and also have shipwrecked with regard to the faith among them are hymenius and alexander whom i have handed over to satan to be taught not to blaspheme paul is telling timothy hold on to faith and a very clear conscience before god and before people your conscience has to be clear and he's telling if you are not maintaining a good conscience like hymenius and alexander you can be very sure that your faith can be shipwrecked so now the question is how to have a clear conscience last sunday we saw in spite of reminding joseph's brothers so many times through circumstances famine and in the father's house their conscience was hardened and god sent them from famine to trial to testing to bring repentance in their heart and this morning i want to tell you how to keep a clear conscience before god number one feed on god's word give accurate information to your conscience from god's word our conscience is like a skylight 
it can only transfer and reflect what is fed into our conscience if the word of god is fed we can our conscience will talk about god's word because that's what it is fed it's a skylight or a sundial which can only work in the light of sun and the light that we are talking about is the light of god's word romans chapter 2 verse 15 they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts their consciences also will wear witness and their thoughts sometimes accusing them and at other times even defending them martin luther who brought about the protestant reformation martin luther had to appear before the emperor twice emperors on one side the pope on the other side each time he was told to take back his teachings recant his teachings luther did not see any proof against his thesis or his views which would move him to recant or pull back his thesis martin luther said a statement like this unless i am convinced by scripture and plain reason i do not accept the authority of the popes and councils then he said i cannot and i will not recant anything that goes against my conscience is neither right or safe he said my conscience is captive to the word of god the next sentence martin luther said my conscience is captive to the word of god and i will recant nothing that goes against my conscience amen he said what a great man of god when he was given a chance to recant or face trial he stood in before the emperor twice he was given hearing and the popes and the catholic church is over there and he said my conscience is captive to god's word and i will not say anything that is contrary to my conscience that is captive to god's word martin luther was excommunicated from the roman catholic church in 1521 we need god's word to be saturated in our lives so that we are having a clear conscience to tell us what is right and wrong and we will not shipwreck our faith moving on once you know god's word we need to sensitize our heart and conscience to god's word many people know god's word that telling a lie is wrong and we know the consequence that liars will not inherit the kingdom of god but we supply like drinking water the second word is a lie many people know that adultery is a sin and no adulterer will enter the kingdom of god in spite of knowing god's word our hearts are not sensitive to god's word and we sin like anything friends reading god's word is not enough we need to derive values when you sit with your children in your homes and when you read god's word tell them what is right and wrong tell them make a heart sensitive in our family that is that senses what is right and wrong so that our conscience is sensitized point number 3 to have a clear conscience deal with sin where it starts deal with sin where it starts now where does sin start sin starts here right it starts right in our minds james chapter 1 verse 15 then after desire has conceived where is it conceived it's in our mind it gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully grown gives birth to death you have to deal with sin where it starts moving forward i want to give you four ways our sin mind will sin four ways our mind will sin number 1 remembering the past sin remembering our past iniquity we sin all of us have got sins in our past isn't it and when we think about it and think about it we are not committing that sin in act but when we think about what has happened we are reliving the sin again in our lives and uh, and we are committing that sin again because the sins of the mind is sin in the presence of god young people i want to warn you to keep your life pure 
or you may have to spend the remainder of your life remembering that sin and committing that sin again and again in your mind not maybe in your acts act maybe once but the whole life you will have to remember remember and be guilty of committing that sin again and again in your life i want to tell you some good news if you confess your sins of the past you may remember it but god forgets it hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 for i will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more the second way the mind sins is by going forward scheming about the future way and way again, again and again in psalms and proverbs the bible says i'll give you a couple of verses psalm 64 verse 4 they encourage each other in evil plans psalm 51 and his verse 10 david said create in me a pure heart o god and renew a steadfast spirit in me because my mind is always sinning in the present i see something and i fantasize and i sin against you lord The fourth way the mind sins is evil attractions. Psalm chapter 1 and this verse 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked. You know why the Bible says don't walk, don't sit, don't stand in the way of sinners? It's because when you are exposed to this evil attraction there out in the world, it puts something back in your mind. So when you are all alone, you will relive that and you will fantasize and in the present you will sin. Don't give a reason to go to the sinners company. The Bible says, "Do not walk in their steps." The morality of the world has come far low. Their conscience doesn't prick when they do wrong, and many times believers have a weak conscience, and we so so get away with everything of the world. Psalm 119 was 37. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. a lot of attractions in the world isn't it job chapter 31 was one i made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman there are some things that i don't look at there are some places i don't walk there are some places i don't sit why because my conscience is getting corrupted and it will never guide me if my conscience is corrupted when i do sin i don't get a warning from my conscience what should we be doing philippians 4 verse 8 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things not the evil things of the world colossians chapter 3 and is verse to set your minds on things above not on the things of the world not on evil attractions not on the past sins or not plotting against the future on the present fantasy but you set your minds on things above and not on earthly things second corinthians 10 verse 5 we take every thought captive and make it obedient to christ to keep a clear conscience before god deal with sin where it starts take captive every thought may it be the past the present or the future avoid evil attractions god can give us a clear conscience next one the last one having a clear conscience is cultivate loving god our relationship with god is a love relationship coming back to our first love what is it we will not do the sins in front of others but when given a chance to be alone we don't mind committing the sins but there if you love god and you know that god is with you and god is watching me when what i am doing and i love god and god is far more important to me than this sin and pleasure if i genuinely love god i will avoid 
no matter who is looking at me or who is not looking at me for me i know that my god is looking at me and my priority is to please him and to love him and to be pleasing him always i will avoid that sin if god the lord is your priority in your life we need to be praying give me the grace to love you more than anything else lord otherwise my plans my schemes everything is evil give me a clear conscience give me the right warnings at the right time i don't want my conscience to be seared coming back to the conclusion of this message paul had a very clear conscience apostle paul look at the testimony of paul's conscience in trial in acts chapter 23 and his verse 1 Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and said my brothers i have fulfilled my duty to god in all good conscience to this day he is telling i am not just testifying myself against god's word my testimony is towards my conscience second corinthians chapter 1 verse 12 this is a situation after writing the first corinthians Paul is waiting for an answer from them because he wrote a hard letter before he could get the answer somebody told that there is a false prophet that has come over there so before he could get the answer for the first corinthians he walks in he tells okay i'm going to make a unannounced visit and he went when he went to corinth there are people in the corinth who is shouting at them and chased him out Paul with a hard heart came out of the church of corinth that he pioneered and he was pastoring for 18 months and then he said this is his defense and he said like this now this is our boast my conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world especially in relations with you with integrity and godly sincerity he is telling you don't look at anyone you are accusing me like this but i don't want to look for you to look at anyone look at my conscience it is testifying that i am pure and holy and i am a man of integrity before you Paul could have said I'll give you some recommendation letters of my friends that I'm a good man I will bring the church committee or the church uh, executive board that I am a good pastor he said he said I can you can ask to God he said God is definitely the biggest court that a man can go to but in the human level there is a bigger court on earth earth and that is your conscience and my conscience and Paul is telling I will not go anywhere I will look at my conscience and my conscience is telling me that I'm pure and holy and a man of integrity Is your conscience telling you that? About what is going on our inside, the foul? Do we know that we are having a good conscience or a corrupted conscience? Your friends don't know that. Your wife and your husband may not not, not know anything of your thoughts. But can you stand before God this morning and tell that my conscience is clear? we are living in a generation of people who are silencing their conscience they are going about with every wickedness the way they want it believers sadly also falling prey to the attack of the enemy and then there are believers who do not want to be fed in god's word they just are seeker sensitive they will, they will go to places where the word of god is shallow not preached sin is not preached nowadays in the churches how can our conscience prick no interest for bible study no interest for prayer where is our conscience we can silence our conscience we are living in a world of generation that you can do any sin and you you go to people they will tell you think as if you have not done it harden your conscience no my heart is telling there's something wrong no it's just your feeling you don't feel something is wrong with you that's what the present literature will tell you feel good about yourselves let me tell you friends we can harden our conscience in this world even believers can weaken their conscience harden their conscience and do whatever they want 
but there is coming a time those who harden their conscience the sundial that god has given to receive god's word and give us a warning against the conscience whatever we sin and if we are such practicing and hardening our conscience we end up in hell such people what is it when we go to hell such people i'm talking about when such people go to hell or in hell is a place where you cannot harden your conscience anymore everyone who had a hard conscience their conscience will come alive it is fire there the bible says fire outside fire in the inside because your conscience is very alert in hell there is weeping gnashing of teeth and crying in hell and wailing in hell why because your conscience is alive we know in hell such people will tell i know what i'm suffering is because of my own guilt what is it talking conscience is talking for the people who harden their conscience in this world their conscience will be awakened in other side on hell and tell i deserve it i know how i hardened my conscience i got that warnings over there the god's words were spoke to me but my heart and my heart i silence my conscience i deserve it it is a never ending pain but i deserve it man's conscience will come to awakening in hell for those who ignore god's word now come to ecclesiastics chapter 12 verse 14 ecclesiastics chapter 12 verse 14 for god will bring every deed into judgment god will bring every deed into judgment including every hidden thing whether it is good or evil you cannot harden your conscience there i just want to conclude this morning coming back to acts chapter 24 verse 16 paul says so i strive always to keep my conscience clear before god and before man don't only tell that your christian life is important your relationship and my relationship with my friend is more important equally important paul says my conscience is clear before god and before man and i pray this will be our testimony